Hey folks, it's Spitz with Pixels and Pills at Digital Pharma East in Philly 2012. It's my pleasure. No, it's not a really tall Will Ferrell. It is Mark Bard of the Digital Coalition. He gave uh, an event yesterday, generated some interest. Do you want to talk a little bit about the event and where the coalition is at these days? Yeah, so we hosted a uh, meeting, uh, the DHC Fall Summit, um, yesterday. Uh, it was really kind of a you know three four hour working session working through a lot of the issues around legal regulatory uh, you know everything from what are some of the best practices social mobile really trying to facilitate a broad diverse conversation that really isn't you know back in line with the mission of the digital health coalition is how do we get as many parts of this equation you know into the same room into the same conversation and whether that's physically in the in a room or in a virtual conversation talking about these issues I think as we all know it's too often the digital elite, whatever you want to call that sub-segment, loves to sit around and talk about what is possible, what could be done, and you know we fail in many cases to kind of bring everyone that needs to be at the table to the table to talk about, okay, here's what's possible, here's what's achievable. Let's focus on what's achievable near term. Who's some of those players? Who do you really need in a room to get some meaningful guidance in lieu of the lack of social media guidance from the FDA? It's been promised for a while. We know how difficult it is to engender. We're kind of in a vacuum right now as pharma marketers go. Who do you need with you? Which kind of buy-in do you need? And from which kind of stakeholders to get to the place you need to go? Yeah, so really look at it two ways. So one, I'll start with at a broad industry level. You say you need pharma, you need device, you need the agencies, the publishers, uh, you need the technology companies. I think in many ways it's really hard to have this conversation without talking to and having a conversation with these companies that are building the platforms that will define the future. And these are not pharma-specific solutions. These are companies like Facebook, Twitter, Google, uh, where they're building out platforms that are relevant to everyone, consumer physicians on a global basis. Within pharma, you know, certainly a lot of the folks that are interested in digital are part of the conversation, but it's just as, if not more important, to have regulatory, uh, to get legal. And legal is an interesting one. Some companies, you have legal folks that are very interested in digital. They're dedicated to you know, some of these issues. And others, you have kind of a generalist that deals with this as part of their job. Uh, but we learn very quickly, you know, you do need to have that broader conversation. And also what we're trying to do is bring, in many ways, you know, I don't know if enlightened is the right term, but, you know, find some of these enlightened and forward-thinking legal and regulatory folks and showcase them to the rest of the industry and talk about how they how their thought process led them to come to their conclusion. Why do they think that these type of initiatives their company has done make sense? And by doing that, you can kind of hopefully turn a switch or kind of educate someone that may be struggling with some of the same issues to say, well, if they reach that conclusion based on the facts at hand, maybe we could come to the same conclusion. Um, and I go back to, it's not to say that we absolutely need to do more in digital, but I kind of look at the world and part of the mission of the DHC is, if there are things you want to do in digital, what are your barriers to doing that? And if you tell me that they're regulatory and legal, then the question is how much of that is perceived and how much of that is real? And if we can eliminate some of the perceptions, which I think about you know, half to two-thirds of some of those are perceptions through education, then people can start doing and experimenting some of these things um, and doing more, if that makes sense from a strategic perspective. Yeah, sure does. And speaking about conclusions and speaking about perceptions, let's begin at the end in this sense what kind of deliverable do you think the coalition could provide the pharma community, healthcare marketers in general, in terms of prescriptive internal guidance? The conflict that I've experienced working on social media guidance in the past is on the one hand, it's very high level and strategic. You're kind of educating your constituents about social media. And on the other, they really need tactical recommendations, the nuts and bolts of how to use some of the platforms that are available. How do you reconcile that divide between the abstract and then the real world everyday management of a social media channel? I'm gonna put up a Facebook timeline, we're gonna tweet. A lot of times the regulatory folks, the marketing folks, they just wanna know what, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to approach this? Sure, so it, it, it's a balance clearly between the high level and the tactical. What we learned very quickly, you know, after forming the group was you can't come up with a highly detailed document. The more lines and sentences you add to that document, the more people you lose from a consensus point of view. So all you can do at the high level is say, here's a consensus document with some overarching maxims, some overall themes that we can all agree to as an industry. If you can use that conversation to then facilitate an internal conversation, because every company, and certainly not just from regulatory, but very much so on the legal side, the risk tolerance is very different company by company. 
So if you say, we agree as an industry that transparency looks like this, we agree that correcting misinformation looks like this, we agree that control of content looks like this, you're going to then maybe a little bit more conservative or you're going to be a little more aggressive. And so that's one thing we've done in terms of kind of pushing out here are these overall social guiding principles. Uh, we're just starting the conversation in mobile as well is, and a lot of this is you're trying to force companies and really more pharma companies because that's really where these conversations need to happen is force people to react to something or at least have a conversation internally to say well this is what other companies believe or this is what these other companies have done do we agree with that if we agree why if not why you know why um, so that's really where we've focused uh, the other thing we did yes you know at the meeting here uh, we were talking about we just did a study uh, we got you know close to about 90 different companies in the in the coalition uh, we had responses from about 61 companies and we asked them a whole battery of questions about you know perceptions and hurdles and all this other stuff and, and we view that as a deliverable as part of that education process so if you look at it and you say wow you know 80 percent of the industry believes there's an ethical obligation to correct misinformation that's an important data point an important piece of information we would argue that companies can look at and say am i in the 20 percent or am i in the 80 percent uh, and a lot of things like that looking at what our company is doing you know there's some other insights in there that you know, clearly creating content for mobile platforms is clearly something that is going to increase in a very big way. Uh, and that also raises issues then in terms of, well, what do we need to think about in terms of regulatory? What are some of the issues that's going to create? So a lot of education, we're going to be pushing that, you know, information out in the next couple of weeks to all the member companies. Uh, but again, it's to spark conversations and force people to say, do we look like nor are we average? Are we ahead of the curve? Or are we behind the curve? That seems to be a very innovative and contemporary way of looking at things, right? It's not really about banging out a document with prescriptive guidance in so much as really transforming infrastructure, educating folks about the possibility, and offering them up the potential that change can happen, and here's a few recommendations on how to make it. Sure, and I one document an approach that we you know certainly relied on at least from a structural perspective was uh, the DTC guidance that Pharma the trade group issued they're very high level and I think that's really the only way you can do this you can't have a prescriptive detailed document and the reality is I think anyone that works in a pharma company knows those principles are interpreted every company by company and bring up objections and yes so you know certainly you can look and say we agree with this in spirit these parts maybe not you know less so um, and that's really what we we're trying to do is say yeah here's a an overall process and that's you know the reality is too and I think people will increasingly realize this you should not be writing guidance specific to sites or platforms you can have a best practice for Facebook Twitter and YouTube but you got to get your head around how you define control, how you define an MLR review process for comments on any third party site, on a corporate site. Until you get to those overall agreements, don't waste your time by trying to write something for a specific site. And what's fascinating to me is that's been probably the problem the FDA's had, yes. right? That without that foundation, that internal foundation with writing, the stakeholders. They're not writing comments to specific sites as they should not. And they can't because the sites are constantly changing and the, and the, boundary, the boundary between proprietary and non-proprietary information, contextual content, sure. all is shifting and changing. Yeah, and, and another big one, you know, so in this kind of macro theme, you know, how do you present fair balance within limited and now certainly mobile is a whole nother issue but even within social are there going to be alternative ways or innovative ways that you can present information in short form um, and I, you know there's not great answers on that and that's a great example where Facebook Twitter YouTube you know all the social platforms in many ways need to start to be part of the conversation to say what are some things or approaches that will work across the different platforms we can't have a solution site by site we need to have some overall industry approaches to how we how we do this. Dealing content, dealing with social. And in a nutshell, how would you view success? Uh, I've learned an awful lot about the coalition and its primary focus in terms of more education than providing this prescriptive guidance. How do you see success moving forward in terms of ultimately influencing companies, but I'm assuming the FDA itself? Yeah, and that's, you know, so you can't certainly have a metric of saying, you know, did the FDA take this line or this uh, point of view into, into account? Um, the FDA was at the meeting uh, that we held here. Uh, you know, certainly we believe there's a healthy and productive dialogue happening there in terms of education. You know, my personal take on it is, and it's always been this, is the group is structured as education, really to kind of promote what's working and why and promote consensus thinking. If you can point to a few examples of companies that have started to spark a debate internally about what they think and why, 
that's success. And that's hard to point to in many ways. You can't go out and say, oh, Shire did this, Lily did this, Merck did this. Uh, but in many ways to say, look, here's a shared forum for companies across the spectrum of agency publishers, technology, pharma, device. Um, if we could spark that conversation about how do we get to making decisions that need to be made, you know, that's success. And it's, it's a little bit of a softer abstract, you know, success in the sense of I think many nonprofits face that challenge or, you know, when you form some kind of a group like that, you can't really look at it and say, here's our KPIs, you know, but KPRs are, you know, change the way people think. Absolutely. Mark Barr, changing the way people think, changing how we look at social media and healthcare communications and eventually changing the world from Digital Pharma East in Philly 2012. Spits from Pixels, out. <laughs>